Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another tutorial. My name is Rico and uh, today we are going to talk about a very hot topic in the underground uh, electronic music production, the snare. The snare, it's uh, something that uh, not everybody can get quite right. And um, in this tutorial, I want to uh, just mention before that this is not the Bible of how to make a snare. This is not the definitive guide to make a snare. But this is um, a way I developed the idea of making a good sounding snare in my years of production. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so here we have a, a normal, uh, let's say, electro beat with a snare. A uh, snare which is essentially dry without any effect. Um, so then we're going to go through each step and we're going to explain how to... Uh, get it on a better shape. So, uh, so the first thing of the snare, it's possibly the most interesting one, it's adding a reverb. So, well, you're going to say you are going to add reverb inside the channel, uh, but I'm going to say to you that I am going to add the reverb as a return. Okay, so when you add uh, return channels, uh, you are working uh, with full dry sound of the, of the original channel and the full wet sounding of the return. Um, with the return reverb on the snare, you can make the sound of the snare sounding really stereo widening and uh, more brightful as well. So let's put an example. So that's the, the snare dry. And then with... I'm going to take the move. Super dry. And you can feel that there is a, an expansion on the stereo field. It sounds brighter. It sounds it, it sounds like uh, the snare is wearing a jacket. It's like stronger. It's like it's better. It sounds more tasteful. So, uh, for this particular example, I'm using a Convology XT. And Convology XT is a free uh, convolution reverb that you can download from um, Impulse Record and uh, Wave Audio. I put the link in the description. And I also made a video about this uh, amazing reverb. If I just change the settings, so you can feel that the, this um, uh, reverb is adding a, a sort of patina on top of the snare, on top of the drive sound, it's adding this wet, very nice colorful sound. And it's much more spread out on the left and right speaker. So in the electro sounding, uh, Type of snare. This is really, this is really cool. This is a very is working a lot. You know, it's very important to have the wet, dry wet maximum, and then play with the decay. Those are the only two things that you should worry about. And sometimes you should also try to uh, blend the wet signal with the dry signal, maybe. Yeah, not have it full on on zero. Uh, and, 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 you know, just try to blend the wet and the dry signal together. So, you know, you can feel that now it's more interesting the sound. And now let's try another example with the Ableton stock plugin. So let's try with um, Reverb of Ableton Live. Okay, so let's do the same things. Dry wet, 100%, decay time. Now let's put off. It's dry. And now it's wet. It's got a, this kind of color. But you can tell the difference between the Convolage XT and this reverb snare, then the reverb of Ableton Live. Let's switch off the reverb of Ableton and put the other one. The difference is enormous. The second element of uh, making the sound sounding good, it's using equalization, is equalizing the snare in a nice way. So now we have, you know, I just double click here. I just double click on the equalizer. You can see that it's much bigger here. And I'm just gonna play the snare. And I'm just gonna 
manipulate the equalizer without talking and you will see how it will change the color and the tonality of the snare. Now, switch over the equalizer. So you feel the snare feels much more thinner, much more lighter. And that's the principle of equalization. You know, the principle of, of equalization is to remove or adding the frequencies of the sound in order to change the color. When, when you're talking about changing the color of the sound, it's actually this, you know, for example, now it's like this. I'm changing the color, I'm changing the tonality inside the sound of the snare. Now remove. So, obviously, it's very important to shape the sound of the snare according to the music that you are playing with. In this case, we have zero music, we just have the drums, and that's it. Um, well, let's try to add a melody, okay, for the sake of uh, the tutorial, let's add a melody, okay. Okay, so I've had some sound. So, melody and the bass, so I just to have the context of the snare. So now that I have everything, You know, I'm gonna shape the snare to the way I feel the melody. And it sounds quite okay to me. Maybe some brightness. Yeah, some brightness is, in, is the case, okay. You know, because, you know, here you have a brightness, here you have the medium. The medium usually it's the muddiness, is the most uh, dirty frequencies, the resonant frequencies. And here is the bass frequencies here. Yeah, I think that, that this is fine, it's fine, okay, okay. So that's the equalizational part, the equalizational part. Um, let's go for the next one. It's uh, saturation. So the saturation, uh, the saturator, usually it's this uh, effect that is often confused with distortion um, because they work in the same way. But saturation uh, basically brings out the harmonics in the sound. So uh, brings out uh, extra frequencies in the sound. So let's just try an example. Here we have a saturator. Now it's off. Let's put it on. Let's put to digital clip. Can you feel the power? If I remove it, put it up. It sounds more aggressive. So saturator, together with the uh, distortion, uh, brings out the harmonics. When I say brings out the harmonics, uh, I mean it brings out uh, extra frequencies that were lying in the sound, uh, making the sound more, more aggressive, more present, more dynamic, more forceful, more confident. And then you have the color and the frequencies you can really play with. Obviously, you can play this with it, with the context. You can try others as well, you know. Hard cool. Is it too much? Is it not? Yeah, I like this one. So if I remove those two and I remove the reverb on the, on the return. Like there is a snare and it's not bad at all. But 
you know, the difference is, is huge. So that the, the, the snare has much more taste. So let's go for the next one. And the next one is uh, compression. Okay, so with the compression, you know, usually compression, it's something that you use uh, uh, in a group of sound. If you have a, a, a drum playing with a drummer, you have kick and snare and hi-hat and charleston and all these uh, group elements. And, you know, the snare makes everything sound more balanced and well uh, sounding uh, good together. Uh, in, in our case, we are just using it with the snare. We're not using it with a group of element, but it's also good to try various presets because the compression can obviously uh, give more dynamic to the sound that together with the saturator can result in a really nice combo. So let's just, um, I, I just add now and I'm going to just play presets of the compressor to see if the sound of the snare can be improved. That's quite interesting. Good compression. Flattenator. Quite nice, but. I like the classic compression. Well, there is not so much difference between all those presets with well, some of them yes but you know um the snare it's already a lot modified so you don't want to just uh, you know modify it for the more so compressor actually you know is good and uh yeah i mean with those uh, three elements we have already shaped the snare in a very significant way Okay, so um, another thing that you can do for change the sound of the snare, it's obviously changing the element of the snare itself, which is the most basic things that everybody can uh, think about. So you, um, in this case, uh, I'm, I'm using a max for live device from Cluster Sound. Um, Cluster Sound is actually an Italian company. I didn't know about them. I just find out that we're from my hometown in Italy, like from my countryside town. And that was when I found out, I was like, wow. So uh, th they are doing uh, uh, groups of uh, drum machines for 707, 808, 909, the Lean Drum, all the famous electronic uh, dance music production drum machine. They convert them into max for live uh, device. And I will put the description link in the description. Uh, they are not for free, you have to pay them, but you know, you gotta support the people, isn't it? Okay, so here we have the three elements that control the snare, the accent, the tone, the snap here, and then the pitch. So let's just play with them and see how we can change the sound. Pretty much different. Then we have the pitch. Yeah, kind of like this. So just it, to understand the snappy, it's how much snappy is the sound, how much bright tone is the tonality, more dark, less dark. And the accent, it's probably the dynamic. So the three of them really complete each other. You know, the, the, the three of them has to do with how much strong the snare is hitting every time it's hitting the drum and how much brightness and uh, powerful. You know, so those, those three, they're really compl com complementary. And then you have the velocity, which is uh, how much hard you want. And then you have the, le the level. And then you have a filter as well. which I don't really use so much. So yeah, that's the tutorial of how to make the sound of the snare decent. And you know, then again, I don't want to stress this enough, but you know, this is not the 
main guide of how to make the sound of the snare perfect because there are many different tastes of music, there are many different techniques, there are many genres of music where there are different snares. So this tutorial is more centered about my own experience of how I make the sound of the snare according to my taste, according to my music and all the techniques that I've used. But more or less, you know, they, you know, for any genres of music, there is always a certain pattern of techniques that people use. And this in general, it's the, what many people do when they make the snare. And, you know, then again, this is a, how to make the sound of the snare sounding decent inside Ableton Live using VST plugins. If I had a 808 machine, which is fully analog, uh, I would process this different and the sound of the snare would sound much more present and stronger um, than, you know, having to do with all these plugins because uh, it's uh, coming from the machine is already sounding very good. So with this in mind, uh, I hope that you liked the tutorial. Thank you for watching and uh, see you on the next tutorial. Bye.